Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Ms. Bun Randam, Malaysia. On my left, Lucas Schmidt, Germany. Ms. Bun Randam, Serf, Lovo, Play. You're very welcome back. We've reached the second match of our semi finals here at the 2013 Carton Irish Open. Baldoyle Babington Centre in North Dublin. It's men's singles in yellow for Malaysia. It's Misbun Ramdan Mohammed Misbun. And that's the last time I will say that name is from now on Misbun. Against uh, Germany's Lucas Schmidt, of course, German, uh, the German who beat Scott Evans in the earlier quarterfinal in three games. It's been a tough tournament for the German so far was three games against Yartsev, the qualifier from Russia in an earlier round. So uh, a lot of kilometers on the legs of Schmidt in this tournament so far. The Malaysian number two seed has been a lot more comfortable. Two set wins all along. 16-17 in the first round, 14-16 and 16 in the second against Rogalski of Poland in the quarterfinal earlier. Very, very efficient in his 21-10. 21-13 victory over 16 Emil Holst of Denmark. I'm Mark Phelan once again. This time alongside me for this men's singles, Alistair Casey of Scotland. Alistair, you're very welcome and we're looking at uh, your discipline here, men's singles. So uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to this one. Have you seen much of either of these players before? I've, uh, I've seen more of, uh, of Misburn mm -hmm. uh, over the last uh, six months. He's been traveling a lot. Uh, with his coach as well, mm -hmm. um, and playing well and seeming to uh, to continually uh, bring his level up as well. Yeah, he's been, he's been in and out of the European circuit on and off now for the last 18 months. Travelling a lot. Seems to be on the road consistently. He was out in Oceania, he was out in uh, the Americas as well. Interesting matchup. Schmidt has been uh, very strong, very stable in this tournament. Uh, had some, as you said, some hard battles, some long matches, but I guess yeah, an interesting match up here. Three-all early in this first game. Serve from Schmidt just short of the service line. The German who is a very consistent player at a, a level just below world-class level. Nice. Always plays a really, really consistent circuit. He likes to put the pressure on. I don't think he's uh, afraid to, to hurt himself physically on yeah. the court and go for everything. Yeah, I was talking to him after his victory over Scott earlier, and uh, he was literally wasted after that match. He left nothing behind on the court. Yeah. He said it took a lot of out of him mentally. And of course, at this level of tournament, it's not just one match a day. You have to come back and gather your thoughts physically recover and come back out for another match later in the day you have to be strong you have to be uh, I think to be honest you need to be a bit nuts to play men's singles top 100 in the world and I think uh, Schmidt's a bit of both he's very strong but I think he he looks a bit uh, fired up for this going to war I think the heavy tournament schedule for Misbon is starting to tell he had three average results the Welsh and the Scottish and the Bahrain International before that. And his last real meaningful Six. result came at the Canadian Open, which was Grand Prix, I think. Yeah, Grand Prix, where he got to the semi-final. Yeah, he was strong there. That was yeah. an awkward physical tournament, very slow haul again, cold haul as well. Yeah. And then he turned up the following week at the Polish International Series <laughs> and, got, and, and got nowhere. And... Uh, so it's been up and down, and I think the schedule has just been so exhausting that uh, not only the, you know, the actual kilometers playing on court, but the kilometers traveling in the air. He must have a few airline gold cards by now. 
A couple of free flights. Yeah, for sure at this stage. Slash victory was in Greece, the Hellas International and the Slovenian International the week before it. I think both lower ranked tournaments. So um, still yet to really prove himself at this level and higher. I think uh, I think he's on the road though. I think uh, I don't know what uh, what the coaching strategy is, but I think he's on the road with the this sort of tournament program as well to also to improve him. To you know, it's it's not easy being on the road and as as we have just said with all these air miles, getting off a plane and you know executing a high level of uh, of play. But at the same time, if you can learn to do it, it really makes you strong as an individual. Constantly living out of a suitcase. First time I did it, I really started traveling. I really struggled. I was just tired, can't concentrate. Uh, and he's, he's putting in a lot of air miles now. Of course, has been sitting in the coach's chair. Eight, seven. Famous Misbon brothers. Big medals, I cannot quite remember the year, but certainly early 90s men's doubles. Nice stick smash. And Ramdan. Is it Ms. Burn or is it Ramdan? Uh, what are we sticking with? Well, it's not Ms. Burn either. <laughs> Bun. Ms. Bun. Ms. Bun. Mm. I told you, you're in charge of pronunciations. Yeah. Push that one out. Schmidt's really Nine. working hard at trying to, I think, come at come at him uh, aggressively, push and, uh, and charge the net. And uh, having some success with it. Again, just decided not to overhit the smash, just to push it Nine. delicately into uh, Schmidt's body. There's patience there, good patience there. He's, been, he's deceptively tall too. You know, he look, he's a lot taller than he looks. It's a stockier, oh, I think, I think powerful you look, look Schmidt. I think he looks pretty tall. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's coming from you. Well, let's see how tall he is next. He's going, oh, I'm pretty small here. <laughs> Oh, well, just because well, similar height yeah, with the coach. Yeah, I toy. Schmidt, Schmidt is one of these typical Germans. We've seen him with the likes of Marcel Reuter, uh, this type of player, powerful with a, with a big attack, big smash. Relentless. So 11-9 interval lead for the Malaysian. 11-8-9. Play. Oof, well out. Long way out, the around the head. Cross-court smash. Nine. I suspect uh, Ramdan's defence is just going to be too strong from what we've seen in the first half here. change of uh, change of placement with a smash Ten, 
Yeah, you could see by the way Misbin was shaping up. He was thought it was going to go cross court, right down the middle from Schmidt. Well, he's tall, Ramdan. He's got this good reach across the court. He's uh, he's very good at picking up smashes that are close to the line and controlling them. And um, maybe the area to attack him is on his body. Judgment from Schmidt. I'll tell you one thing about Ram then. He's not making any mistakes. There doesn't seem to be any unforced errors so far. Probably I'm probably wrong, but I'm not seeing many errors no, no. coming. For sure, I agree. We've seen a lot of errors this week. Uh, players maybe finding the courts hard to play. Ram Dan's consistency is uh, up there. Nice and high at the net from the Malaysian. It's just too quick, it's just too strong for Schmidt at the moment. The Schmidt must be tiring by now. He's had some he's had some hard physical games. Yeah, two in a row. There wasn't the first was in two, but it was still a tough battle, so I'm sure he's strong enough to, to do it again, but uh I, I suspect he may just have lost a little bit of his speed. Fatigue must be kicking in a, li a little bit. The only thing is that th there has been a reasonable break between semis, between quarters and semis today. Um, 17, 10. These guys should be used to it. They're on the circuit. You know, they're doing this week in, week out, having to play two, two matches a day. 18. Ten. Right now, it's pretty much one-way traffic in favour of the Malaysian. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, you should be able to handle it, but mm. but uh, Ramdan's had an easier pathway, so yeah. the math will just tell you that he's not had to work as hard, so he's going to have an have an advantage, I I guess. That lift from Schmidt was very tired-looking, easy stick smash, put away from the Malaysian. I think he's pacing himself. I think he's already starting to focus on uh, what he is going to try and do in the second game. That's nice play. Schmidt persevering with this uh, cross block on the on the defence. He's he's been trying that uh, quite a lot. Trying to turn Ram down, move him across the court. That's good play, dude. 13, 19. Oh, yeah. 14, Accurate smash down 19. the line, you see it on the replay. Late charge. Can the late charge continue? First game. Oh, okay. called in. Yeah, and you can see, <laughs> you can see Lucas <laughs> running on the spot, <laughs> mentally trying to get himself up and going in this game. He knows he's not there. He knows he's been completely outplayed in that first game. Hey, he has no problem with three setters. No problem. He's, he's just warming up. Well, it's going to be a three set now. If he's going to advance for sure. Lisbon. It's, it's 18 months now he's been traveling because I remember it started back in Austria in 2012, so more than 18 months. And he always travels, that's his father obviously, and his uh, cohort 
with the guy back up in the stands at the back with the orange jacket. See him? Yep. I don't know if people can see it on screen. You can probably see the bright orange jacket. He's the video guy. Oh, that, you know, so then I'm starting to suspect that there's money behind this operation. <laughs> so yeah. I'm pretty sure uh, they're, they're not sitting in uh, cattle class like me. So they're <laughs> probably getting good beds as well. Yeah. Once you start flying business class and getting a good sleep on the plane, it's not as hard. Lukas still in a lot of discussions with his coaches. Second game. No ball. Play. No second game underway. Let's see what the German can bring to the table. He has to start well, though. He can't start with unforced errors. Oh, and again, another unforced error. He's struggling with the length on this side of the court. A good reply from Schmidt. Pinpoint accuracy. Jill Clark would say plum on the line. Stop you moving on that chair. It's the noisiest chair in the world. They <laughs> turned the heaters off on us today. Service over. You can still see Lucas trying Two. to motivate himself, Three. trying to get himself going. Better control on that rally for the German. Three. Oh. First real rally that he's dictated the pace of. Starting to find his range now. Over. Easy smash winner though, the lift only half court. See Pablo Abian over in the corner looking on with intent. He's just uh, checking how high the roof is to see if he can lift. <laughs> Schmidt started to play his way back into this. Guys, drop. Six, five. <laughs> I'm looking at Schmidt's racket, and he obviously messed up putting his sponsor's logo on. He put one on one side, but put the reverse on the other side. That's the same racket that he finished the last match against Scott Evans with. 
and he told me after that's his that's his last Sarah racket. Silver. He's broken the strings Six. and all his ra other rackets this week. So uh, he's, he's, he said he'll have to borrow some from uh, Richard Domka, <laughs> a spare for uh, for this semi-final. They both play with the same racket. I haven't seen a stringing facility at this event. The stringing in the shop. The stringing in the shop that you have to pay for, which is now pretty much the norm on all the circuit Six. tournaments. You don't see any free stringing, except at the major European events, championships, yeah. things like that. Hey, the global economy is not not strong. Yeah. People need to make money. So in general, most Seven players four. arriving in the tournament Seven with a good four. supply of rackets, freshly strung, hoping that it'll get them through. But when you're getting to the business end of tournaments, I wonder how many he's broken. You know, how many how many rackets does he have? Most players now are travelling with eight, nine, ten rackets. Yeah, most most with ten for sure. Has he has he managed to break strings in ten rackets? This could be a situation where he's here with Richard and Dieter Domka playing singles this week. Domka's certainly know how to go through a few racket strings <laughs> in a tournament. I have a feeling that they're sort of sharing them between them to yeah. see who needs them, you know, at any one time. <laughs> of course, Dieter also in the semi-final. So, uh... The Germans are invading. <laughs> yeah. Service over. Nine. Eight. Point for point at the moment. A great smash. I have to say, uh, so far today, uh, the line judging has been fantastic. I think we have our A team out today. We sure do. I'm, I said it in the last match uh, while commentating with Sam. I said we were the first ones to complain about it when it was bad, but we'll also be the first ones it's been good to today. speak about it when it has improved significantly. I'm always a believer there's going to be uh, a share of good calls and bad calls, but the, the thing that's go on me in this tournament is the indecision yeah certainly today is a, you know, we're talking different a lot of these people that are here on the lines today uh, Sam was saying are academy players and people involved with clubs at a higher level so you know know the sport know what what the lines are so 11-8 Three points in a row, taking the Malaysian to the interval. Court five, twenty seconds. Court five, twenty seconds. Starting where he left off just before the interval. Oh, Lucas talking to himself. Frustration Thirteen. in the body language of the German. That looked to be going oh. out. You think so? Maybe not. I'm sure. Angle on the stick from Schmidt. Ten, quick 13. in. 
follow up. He's just forcing too much. I mean, I, I, I think he, he realizes he has to impress himself on the game, and he is trying very hard to do that, but he's just uh, overcooking a lot. That's a great cross drop. And this is the difference between the two players. Ramdan just looks far more comfortable. Just uh, dealing with what's coming at him. And uh, Schmidt looks like the one who's trying to force and impress himself on the game. And he's not out of it. Yeah, certainly not out of it yet. I think we need Ramden to switch off because I think he's just progressing his way to 20. And 21. He's getting there patiently. Great rally, super rally. <laughs> yeah, clipped the line, so uh, landing in for Schmidt. For Schmidt's having to do the distance. He's, he's running, he seems to be running more miles at the moment than his, uh, his opponent. I like this, 13. keeping it close. Oh, there's only two in it. 15, 13. The German who trails by two. Remember, he was 13, 8 behind. Diving retrieval from the Malaysian. Very explosive. That stick smash around the head cross court. Again, the German continues running and running and running and getting the shuttle back. 14, this game is starting to turn in the favour of Lucas. On the adjoining court, Spain's Beatrice Corrales, who advances to the women's singles final in three games. 29 in the deciding game against Anathea Madsen. 21 9, excuse me. And all of a sudden, ah, sir, there's only one in it. And it looked like the Malaysian was heading to a comfortable win. Oh, and again. All oh, credit to Lucas. Forced his way into this game. Oh, fantastic play. Sixteen fifty. I saw this. I saw this at the Polish International International Series tournament at the beginning of the season, very beginning of the season, but Ramdan, one love, one set up, he was something 17, like 16-8 ahead in the second and lost the match. I think he seemed like he, he didn't have, he, he did switch off a little, and I think uh, I think he looks a little apprehensive now, he's, uh, and again, this, he wasn't making any mistakes, and now he just looks like uh, he, he's scared of the finish line. Because this is starting to fall apart. Schmidt happens. Yeah, Schmidt happens, exactly. And you see uh, Misbun Sidek in the coach behind, talking to his man, get him to change the shuttle, just to try and break the momentum. Six. 
service over. 60, 80. Pressure easing point for the Malaysian. Oh, and then a rush the backhand. This is fantastic. I love this. I'm, I'm amazed this has turned 90, around. But, but maybe it's uh, it's on random. A lot of he's just he's not nice switched off. Wild smash cross court. Oh, game over. What a turnaround for the German. Looked out of it at the interval. Trailed, what was it, 13-8, 15-9. And managed to come back and wins but all, all the 10 way. of the last 12 points. Yeah, that's, that's on random. We're back, third set. And I feel in that second set, Ramdan just Schmidt himself. Can I say that? <laughs> uh, you've been building up for that one for a while, Alistair. I, I know you have. Play. Fire me tomorrow when yeah. I'm not here. I think you're full of Schmidt. <laughs> Service over. This match Go mustn't be very interesting. Go. We're starting to talk Schmidt, so uh, let's, let's refocus. First point to the Malaysian. Ooh. Oh, they're all going over now. Yeah. Fortunes over. have changed. One. Oh. Last uh, return back to that, uh, back to the net, and it's. I'm starting to think Lucas is going to take this one away. Yeah. You know, it <laughs> it's amazing how quickly the momentum can swing over. in this game. And go back to the first game. He was hitting everything out, Lucas. He was really struggling to find the court. I like these moppers. The good moppers. They mop with intent. They don't just come out and flap around. I'd want a bigger mop. Yeah, that's a good mop. But Obviously, practice. A bit labor intensive. A bit small. Oh. Ooh. Nice to the body. Lucas is coming for you. He senses his blood. You're saying you've seen this before with Ramden? Saw it only at the beginning of September, Polish International. He was top seed for the event, obviously at an international series, and uh, it was oh. as early as second. I can't remember. I think it was second round. He got through first round, no problem. I think Lucas is playing well, but Ramden's falling apart here. He needs a bigger court. Four, two. Somebody called a sports psychologist.
rather than just putting himself close. I think he's struggling to get a foothold in this game now. Mopper is back with intent. With intent. Mopping with intent. Times we've seen Lucas just struggling with his length on his lifts from both sides. That's a great cut, Luke. Up very, very early. Good use of the wrist. He's be a lot more focused in it, this cross-court smash. I think it's confidence. I think he yeah. seemed in the second set to lose all confidence in his ability to finish the game. And I think Lucas has just switched off the last couple of points, given a couple of unforced errors. And you don't want to give the Malaysian his confidence back because I think he's technically very strong. He's quick. Empire calling both men back to play. Into the lead for the Malaysian, and I think this is where we're going to start to see the fatigue setting in for Schmidt after those long, hard matches. Go ahead, Alistair. I think the Malaysian's just discovered a second wind. I think mm -hmm. he's been given it a little bit. I think Lucas is just when you get a guy down like that, and uh, and the, for a huge period there, the Malaysian just looked like he's, he's he didn't have any confidence in his uh, ability to dictate and control the match, and I think he's just been allowed to get that back. He's been allowed a little bit back in. Mm 
Get him down. Keep him down. I want to see a fight. I want to see a big nasty fight all the way to 21. That's a good reply for the German. Two quick points. Malaysian is so vulnerable to getting bullied. I'd say whatever you do, body language, everything, make him look like you are coming for him. Because he's, he's lacking, he looks like he's lacking confidence in himself. Yeah, he's, a, he's a timid sort of character. Just, just reading the body language, he started with such confidence in the first game, and now he just, he just looks apprehensive. He just shake of the head, the shoulders. Lucas needs to take full advantage of it. It's, uh, four points in a row now. serve the German. 14, 12. Good serve. You can see in the replay. Just out of reach of Misbin. Oh. oh. Couldn't get any tighter. Rye smile there from Lucas. Hands up. All right, it wasn't my fault. We don't need to give him points. It would be too nice. Keeping his nose in front here, three point lead. Great run. Four points straight after the interval. Oh. Oh. Headshot. Right to the head. Rack it up in defense 16. rather than anything else from uh, Schmidt. Germany looking to get two men into the men's singles. Final, Dieter Domke doing the business against Pablo Albion, the adjoining court, the first set. Pablo, though, another three set specialist. Oh, oh that was a wild swing. 15, the opportunity was there. Try to take his coach out now.
draw. That's fantastic. That's intelligent. Malaysia just hanging in there at the moment. We're reaching a very critical part of the game now. We get to see who's prepared to step up. Lucky to even get the shuttle back. Telling you know, all the way through that rally, all the way through that rally, I was like, if Lucas is just keep this in, yep. then mistake is coming. Great fight from the German. Working hard in defense, then neutralizing the attack of Misbun, and then drawing the error. The Malaysian is looks very capable of questioning his own ability on the court there, and, and I would be telling uh, Lucas at the moment, just keep it and make the Malaysian hit two, three more than he wants to, and the mistake will come. I don't think the Malaysian believes he can win. And again, the, the error on the net. 20, match point, so it's match point, Lucas Schmidt. Safe drop there from the Malaysian. Taking advantage of the poor lift from Lucas. Two points adrift at 2018. And now uh, the umpire allows the shuttle to be changed. Then Lucas, I think you can take this one. Seizing the initiative for sure. That time, 
That's, the, been that's the first time in about six or seven rallies, though, that the Malaysians actually pulled his smash out close to the line. I think he's been very safe with his shots, and I think that's the confidence side of it as well. And now he's uh, in a position where it's do or die. He has to make his shots. Nobody wins by accident. Oh, another great again, smash down you know, the line. Well, you know, as I said, it's uh, time to step up and maybe he can. 20 all, 49 minutes gone. Just uh, the Malaysian saves three match points. Oh! I think Lucas certainly thought the cross-court smash was an out-and-out -out winner, and somehow Misman got it back. If there's ever a time to play your uh, four best rallies, it's <laughs> at 17-20 down in the third set. <laughs> ah, it's out. And from a position of a complete control, Schmidt lets it go, and it's Misman who comes through to win in three. 22-20 in the deciding game and really I think Lucas Schmidt will be asking himself what has you just know, happened. All credit to the Malaysian. I think the Malaysian had a crisis of confidence for the vast part of the second and the third set and then when faced with the worst possible situation he stepped up very very strongly there. Yeah you can see the frustration from Schmidt smacking himself in the head as he walked over to grab his bag yet yeah, tapping it mentally I think he thinks he let it go. That's a very good game for the Malaysian to win for his confidence. I believe that uh, he can win. Yeah, for sure. And that's his, certainly his best performance I've seen from Raz, uh, Misbin Ramden on the European circuit. He's been here a lot. And uh, as the players leave, we'll be back with the next game on court. Women's single semi-final. The big one for Ireland, of course. Chloe McGee against Buen Zhang of USA.